Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, it's comedy in your ears, which we all love. Mm-hmm. You're listening to the About Last Night podcast with my boy, uh, Adam Ray. Huh? What the fuck is up? Well, I'll tell you what's up with me, guys. I'm uh, I'm bored. I'm bored in Oregon. Why the fuck am I in Oregon? Well, my stepmom died. She was on hospice for about a month, and um, and then and then uh. Gave up her ghost, as they say, and uh, went to the heavens above. I was in the room when it pretty much happened. That was fucking sad. There's really no other way to uh, slice it. It was sad as fuck. My dad was with me. I was staying uh, there the the night prior. It was happened uh, at like 11.30 in the morning. Woke up around nine. My dad was working from home. We went in there to check. Breathing was shallow. Heartbeats were thready, as I guess the medical term uh, goes. And she fucking died, man. And that was crazy. And whew, lots of emotions. Stepmom. It's my stepmom. Had it been my real mom, I would be, I don't know what where I would be. I'd be Devastated is not even the right word. You know what I'm saying? Crushed. So my mom is, uh, you know, she's she did it all and uh, continues to be that source of support that I got as a kid from just one parent, pretty much. You know, got the support from dad, but not until college, really, when when the relationship got patched up. So mom has been crushing it. So stepmom, it's weird because it's the woman that my dad left my mom for. So that's a weird dynamic. How do you process that? You don't really. Are you, are you supposed to? I've never really processed much from that uh, side of my life. We kind of push it down. Oh, by the way, this is not going to be a hilarious podcast. I guess I should just tell you guys. I'm uh, taking a stab from the uh, direction I've been given from a manager and, and some comedy friends to uh, be more vulnerable and uh, open up to this side of the guy. So I'm fucking doing it in a hotel in Oregon, which, by the way, I almost get, got kicked out of last night because I was doing some voiceover auditions super late night. And uh, one was a pirate, one was a video game guy, and one was a um, St. Bernard. So it was a lot of... <laughs> Get the cable derby and then John, John, get down. Fuck. And then, uh, hey, sorry, I'm a pirate to sail the seven seas. Bunch of that bullshit. And then pounding on the wall, which I get because I make, I'm causing a ruckus, as my, uh, my mom used to say. Don't cause a ruckus. You're wrestling. Any other moms out there say wrestling instead of wrestling? That didn't bug me in the moment, but now I'm just like, Fuck, it's wrestling. Um, it's like my mom used to say Fanta. or Fan- She'd say Fanta, and I was like, it's Fanta. She's like, no, no, it's Fanta. Don't you want to want to Fanta? No, that's not it. It's Fanta. Don't you want to want to Fanta? The commercial, the Christmas commercial isn't, did Santa want to Fanta? I'll oh, see. I just heard some fucking Tic Tacs upstairs. A little broom, a little broom knocks. But yeah, man, 
death is very real. And I was there when she passed and took her last breath. And I can't even tell you what that was like. But I am, I guess. I'm trying to. Looking at someone about to die is fucking bonkers. Looked right into her eyes. Her eyes were in the back of her head. Couldn't uh, really focus on anything. Progressively just got worse. Was talking to her, uh, well, she was responding more or less with sounds and words about a week ago. Sounds about three days ago. And then just, man, got sicker and sicker. Stage four liver cancer. It was breast, then it went to the liver. Had a bladder infection to the hospital. Didn't think my dad was going to get to see her and say goodbye because uh, of all the COVID-19 drama. And um, so uh, she was able to come home on hospice and be in the house, which I think was nice. I keep trying to paint that picture to my dad of what it could have been had she not been able to come home. Um, you know, there's, you have to find some silver lining. I was like, it's actually been kind of beautiful that she's been able to be here at home with you and spend these last moments. And you've been able to check on her. And you've been up, we got her up into the wheelchair and can't, got out to the living room a few times. You know, you got to hold on to that stuff. The alternative would have been a fucking nightmare. She dies from a blood infection. You can't see her in the hospital. Ugh. Nobody wants to see that movie. But you do, right? When they make movies that are that dark, you fucking go see them. You sick fucks. Schindler's List. My dad watched Schindler's List two nights ago, which I did not know that was on the hospice movie <laughs> list, but Schindler's List is on the hospice list. Who knew? Made him feel better, I guess, to see Jews suffer. That's not why, but it just, I guess it made him, maybe he didn't want to cry at his own life, want to cry at somebody else's. Who knows what the logic was? Hospice gets you all twisted emotionally. Hospice movies. Yeah. We watched Jerry Springer when she passed. Dad walked out. He was like, that's it. And I mean, he didn't just say that's it. He was devastated. He was sobbing. Seeing your dad cry, I've seen it before, and I've seen him over this entire stretch of stage four liver cancer, seen him get very emotional, which is just awful. Seeing your folks get super uh, emotional sucks over that. My dad cried when I told him I got the role uh, of Le Soir in the heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy, and he cried. I think he was in the bathroom, actually, in Laughlin, Nevada. I could hear a toilet flush after I told him, and they started crying. So I was like, are you crying because I told you the part? Did you drop something in the toilet, or did something happen with your stool? No, he was crying for me. He was happy that I'd gotten such a big, big part. But seeing him cry over this is uh, sucks. It's a weird thing to see your parents cry that hard and be that sad, and you can't do anything about it. It's a very crippling feeling, and I hate it. You know, I've seen my mom cry. Last time I saw my mom cry was when I reunited her with her brother. She hadn't seen in, I want to say, 20 years. We threw a surprise 70th party for her and, and uh, was able to fly him up. And, and uh, he surprised her and she sobbed tears of joy. And even that was like sad in a way because they're crying because they're, they're crying because so they're, they're so happy to see each other, but also crying because they're, they're sad that they've been have spent so many years apart. But this is different, man. Death is. A part of life, as they say, and inevitable. But, you know, I've had my fair share of death scares with car accidents and epiglottitis, where my epiglottis got infected by a random bacteria and swelled up and covered up my air passageway twice, by the way. It's a one in like 200,000 disease or bacteria, and I got it fucking twice because I'm cool like that. I haven't gotten the COVID, though. Knock on wood. Is this wood? Fuck. How many people have knocked on wood and it's not wood? And they're like, yeah, right, superstition survives another night. They're like, nope, you actually just gave it to yourself because that's fucking fake, fake, uh, fake mahogany. <laughs> I know like six woods because I took wood shop class in seventh grade. Mahogany, oak, fuck, is that it? Damn it. Pine? Yeah, I think that's a wood. Danny from the New Kids on the Block? Um, yeah, he'll be okay. Life does move on, but right now he's very sad, and I don't know if we're going to be able to leave him by himself. So that's now a tricky dance. My brother and I rotating, me being there with him. Right now we're both there, but 
you know, we have to take turns. And, and thankfully, lives are being put on hold. He doesn't go to medical school until August. Things should be okay by then. I might be dabbling in some stand-up shows here at the end of the month in Utah and Arizona to shortly follow after that, which is kind of scary to think about because then once I expose myself to that amount of public, do I need to then quarantine uh, um, myself for a little while to not be back around my dad? He's at risk. He's 75, 76 on Friday, whenever this comes out. But uh, which that's another thing too. And now it's like, I want to do something for his birthday, but not too big and grandiose because I've been doing a good job. My brother and his wife as well, of filling the moments, not letting too much dead air happen so that we can, that's my job. That's my job in life. And I feel like I've taken on that role with my family, friends, relationship to be the source of positivity and be, be in a good mood all the time. And I am genuinely, but I get down like everybody else. But I just kind of, when I feel it, I feel like I don't have the option because I'm now looked at, not only from being a comedian, because comedians, everyone's got a dark side, not just comedians, people, but I always feel an extra responsibility to be, and I enjoy it. I lean into it because it makes me feel good to be up and, and whether I'm on or just kind of still just social, I like that. But when I'm not feeling it, man, I'm, I don't want to say I'm not, not fun to be around, but it's different. If I'm not feeling it, I might as well just go. I might as well be by myself. And I enjoy that. I'm starting to find that. If I'm not feeling like 100% me, which I feel like is a lot of fun, adding to the conversation, making people feel good, being active uh, in the hang. If I'm not that, then I should just fucking Irish goodbye. And I've done that. Drunk or sober. Like right now, I was with my dad and brother and, and his wife. And, and, you know, this is the day after my stepmom's passed. And it's just a heavy day. And I, I started to get real tired. I think just the emotions of trying to be a rock for my dad. And also trying to figure out my emotions towards my stepmom passing. And what being there for my brother, asking, you know, trying to check in on and gauge his emotions. That's his mom, even though he's got a weird relationship with her. Did anyway. You know, so I haven't really given myself a chance to let things sink in. But looking into the eyes of death as I did is, whew, man, I won't soon forget that. And I'm trying to, again, just be there for my dad and be a rock. And, and not, I don't think I yet have to find perspective or, you know, a uh, silver lining or comedy, which I've jotted some things down. You can't not. And that's one thing I feel fortunate as a comedian that I've conditioned myself to see the funny in everything. Not right away. I did think about how the fact that my dad and I, when she passed a good 10 minutes after we sat on the couch, just I was kind of rubbing his shoulder and he's crying and trying to fill the moment with some nice thoughts. It's, it's still too soon actually for him to really speak too positively of her and, and remember and reminisce. It just, Bring, makes him sad obviously but we put on the tv and trump was on and he's like i can't watch this i was like i can't watch it either we usually find some funny in in the trump <laughs> the trump uh the show that is the trump presidency couldn't couldn't yesterday flip the channel he goes jerry springer's always good and there's moments after his wife's died put on jerry springer we fucking laughed for like 45 minutes and commentated and added our own narration to what was happening. And it, he smiled and laughed. And I kind of then was, you know, definitely going off of his taking a, I was like, you're, you're driving this, this ship, you know, we're, we're grieving right now. So like, what, if you want to laugh, we're laughing. If you want to stay silent, stay silent. You want to cry? I'm here for you. What's fucked about when your wife dies, a lot of things, but, um, my my dad, you know, we've done a good job, my brother and his wife and I, of, of keeping the conversations light, making him laugh, trying to keep him distracted. You know, that's, that's my job. That's a comedian's job, to keep you distracted, you know, from reality. My dad even said today, I'm going to stay in denial as long as possible. It's like, fucking yeah, why wouldn't you? It's what kids do about the real world. It's the best way to stay 
sane and 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 not get too affected, which is uh, I think something we all do a little too much, consume too much of what's happening. Not that you should be numb to everything, which because it you know when you feel stuff, that's when you are a person. I think I could do more of that. I feel stuff in doses, and then I push it down when it gets too real, which is why I'm trying to open up more right now. But that balance my dad's finding of because he'll get incredibly you know joyful and just get filled with so much happiness and when we make him laugh he's got such a hearty laugh and he's just he laughs so much and and uh and uh you know it's so nice to see him like be that happy and then it's immediately followed by like a uh, uh, which is just like a real sad like i wish you could be here and that's really fucking a bummer to to see you know that he's I don't know if it's that he feels guilty that he's having a good time and she's not here. I think it's a little of that, and it's a lot of, man, I wish he could be here and laugh with with the family. This is so great. Those moments more and more I start to see when I'm with my family are truly, you can't replace them. You know, when you when you just have a really sweet moment with your family, brother-in-law, sis, Mom, niece, dad, stepmom, whoever, you have a really a, a hearty laugh that's that builds, and everyone's kind of in on it, man. And I think he's really sad that she doesn't get to have that at the core of it. Obviously, many reasons he's sad that she's not here, but that's a balance I think that will be tough to find for a bit of how much can I let myself be in a good mood? But, yeah, it's weird. Real sad for my dad. And and uh, and sad for her. As much as she was not my mom, got to know her. Again, my sister had a different relationship with her. A little older when everything went down and my, my dad left. and. And, and married her, and so uh, she's a little closer to it, a little, has become more accepting of it all as time goes by, as you do, and you mature, and you just learn to prioritize what really matters and, and, not, and minimize the stress, you know, which is easier said than done, but when you can do that in life, man, you're just opening yourself up to a, a, a plate of healthier circumstances when you, and, and opportunities and experiences when you can go fucking just, Drop it, man. We're all going to die at some point. I don't I fucking enjoy as much of this as I can. You gotta, you have to say that to yourself. You got to look in the mirror and really challenge yourself to fucking drop your baggage and drop the bullshit. And I was able to do that early on and really just accept her as someone that's making my dad happy. And then you get older and I realize how much my unhappy my mom was during all that and for years after until she met my stepdad. And then that kind of creeps in and goes, oh, fuck. Then you get a little anger towards your pops and stepmom because you're like, well, you guys fucking made my mom really unhappy. But people grow apart, man. My folks were married for 20, 17 years. I think 10 probably were good. They had issues. So, you know, when you have issues and things don't work out, people move on. And he moved on. She, she moved on eventually. And which is why her and my stepdad so sweetly reaching out, concerned, Family's family, man. People, once you get past, and you know, all the on the surface emotions, and people can kind of just lead with love and want to want the best for people, then you can't go wrong. You can't be wrong if that's what where, where you're coming from is wanting the best for someone. It sounds like a Jerry Springer final thought. <laughs> Which again, my dad and I, we watched a lot of Jerry Springer right when she passed. That was crazy. You don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. We didn't want to sit in silence. We had to do something. Couldn't watch CNN Trump. So we put on Jerry Springer. That show is such garbage. I think it was like making us feel better, but also mindless. Why are you fucking him? Well, because you a bitch. And, then, and Jerry's like, uh, you're also fucking her? Maybe. Let's bring her out. Audience goes nuts. She comes out. 
I'm fucking him too. Then the girls start fighting. It's chaos. My dad and I are laughing, just giggling. Like 15, 20 minutes after she passed away. Just, again, being distracted and laughing at <laughs> fucking the most insane television. I haven't thought about Jerry Springer in 20 years. And then he closes with his final thought which was oddly profound and always has a way of tying things together. It was like a oddly emotional and appropriate in this time. We're sitting there. Stepmom's just passed his wife. And Jerry's like, well, you know, here's my final thought. Life gets tricky. Now, whether Teresa and Daniel were meant to be together, they were together for a brief time. Was there a kid involved? We don't know. He says no. She says yes. There's two other chicks he's fucking. He's got side chicks and no kids and pants that don't fit. There's a lot going on for Daniel. But what Teresa doesn't know is that at one point, she will find the person that she's supposed to be with. And that's all we can all do is try to find someone to accompany us, accompany us on this journey of life and live it to the best we can. Live in love and learn, but mostly love. Thanks for watching. I look over at my dad and he's wiping tears from his eyes, nodding along to Jerry Springer's final thought. Just fucking connecting on a level you did not expect after his wife passes away. You never know, man. Got to keep moving forward. I know I sound like a Waylon Jennings fucking song, but ah, life goes on, man. That was a great show with Corky, the uh, kid with Down syndrome. I wonder where that kid is right now. Be crazy if he popped up on Jerry Springer. I wonder if they've done a full Down Syndrome episode of Jerry Springer. Got to get him outside more, too. Got to get some walks going. The outside is cathartic and therapeutic and fucking refreshing, for lack of a better word. Took like an hour walk yesterday with my uh, brother and wife at the end of the night. My dad, you know, he slept most of the day today, thank God. Hadn't gotten a good night's sleep in a month. Rest is key in this situation, too, which is why I'm home right now. I just was falling asleep. We were watching Jumanji, too. And I was falling asleep because I'm emotionally drained, but also, hey, man, I'm a Jumanji 1 guy. Sorry. Robin Williams. David Allen Greer, fucking Kirsten Dunst, and Bonnie Hunt. Hey, Jack Black, Kevin Hart, Rock, you guys fucking rule. But it's a different movie, too. It's a different time. You can't compare Jumanji 1 and, and the new Jumanji. New Manji. <laughs> fucking new Manji. No thanks. Big hard. Fucking no. The circle does not get the square if we're playing Hollywood squares. Fucking X marks the spot on that movie. I'm going original. Original Jumanji. <sighs> gotta, gotta savor the days. Is that a Starburst slogan? <laughs> Why do I always feel like I'm talking in candy... Candy, uh... Candy ads. Savor the, savor the, savor the days. Hey, put one foot in front of the other and taste the rainbow. She lived a good life, though. I think I was around for uh, for most of it. You know, I guess met her when I was when I was nine. So she was in her late thirties, maybe. So I've known for thirty years. No, I'm thirty-seven, so twenty-eight years. Man. I just want my, my dad to be okay. You know, that's what you want. You, you want most people innately want their family and folks to just be okay. It's why right now sucks so hard because people are apart from each other. And uh, I've been doing a good job of staying clean and being around my dad. There's no, there's no, no choice though, really. Mask it, wash hands, sanitize, rub things down, rub yourself down. Uh, no, come on, let's keep it clean. This hotel, though, is getting a little too eerie. Like, look at the art on the wall behind me. Was that a fucking what's, pet cemetery? Hotel art, unless you're staying at, like, even a W Hotel, their art is, like, out of some weird fucking Stanley Kubrick movie. It's always, it's not the art that you would get. I've never been in a hotel and been like, actually, that's not true. <laughs> I was just staying in an embassy suites in Seattle. They had a fucking great skyline shot of Seattle. And I was like, what would happen if I stole this? Because we've all stolen stuff from hotels, whether it be soap, 
or towels or robes. They know it's going to happen. Oh, you think when you check out, they're checking your bag for the blanket? Yeah, man, they just added to the bill, you know? Man, I've had some nice comforters over the years, though, and I've definitely thought about stealing them all. But, but then you get that, you know. And the last time I stole something was when I worked at Albertsons. I used to steal toothpaste and deodorant and French bread, all the necessities that a young 15-year-old prepubescent fucking cum-filled teenager is looking to, you know, stock the shelves with. French bread because it was on break or I was leaving. They had no cameras at Albertsons during that time. They did when I was about to quit and go to L.A. for college at USC. And guess what? Cameras got installed two weeks before I quit. Boom, got caught stealing film. Worked in the customer service booth. Got a bunch of film, hooked some buddies up, stole some myself. They fucking caught me. My boss, Dan Boyle, was so disappointed. Never forget, he was like, over the loudspeaker. Adam, uh, you can come to my office. I knew right away, too. My heart just sunk. I'm like counting money in the customer service booth. I'm just like, fuck. I had two weeks. Two weeks I had to get through, and then I was, I was out of here. I could have left the grocery store world feeling good about myself, and instead sit down. He was like, does this guy look familiar? Turned on a tape. It was footage of me fucking putting the film in my backpack. Oh, my heart sunk. Getting caught stealing blows, especially by a guy that, like, respected you. I've been there for four years. I was, like, a star employee. I was a fun guy. They all came to my plays in high school. And he catches me stealing two weeks before I leave. And I just was like, dude, I don't know what to say. I fucked up. And he's like, yeah, you did. You fired. And I was like, that's probably the right move. I was like, can I maybe just stay for two more weeks? And then you fire me when I before I leave. I, you can still get the satisfaction of firing me. Just let me finish for two weeks. Make a little bit more dough. He's like, you're fired. I was like, all right, just checking. A couple days, you're fucking fired. All right, potato salad on the way out. Get the fuck out of here. I wonder where that guy is now. He was in his 60s. He might still be with us. But being a grocery store lifer, that is. It's only 1017. I can't be too concerned that people are trying to catch these here. But like I was saying, they get real chatty here at the hotel, man staff i didn't leave the room and until four today because i had a bunch of vo work and when i left they were like ah he emerges look who comes out of the of the darkness it's like fuck can i stay here without additional commentary uh, well we did it we took a stab we took a stab at the solo podcast this is me putting it out there trying to get more real with you guys you know because I do so many of these podcasts and I enjoy making people look good and feel good and being funny. Did one today with my boy Ryan Eggold. He so, uh, plays Max Goodwin on New Amsterdam. He was on Blacklist and Dirt and fucking 90210 and Black Klansman. He's a great actor. Went to college together, was in the acting program at USC. Phenomenal kid. It was really fun. Hadn't talked to him in a while. We've texted over the years. Had not had a face-to-face -face like that in years and it was really fun, man. So. But again, trying to challenge myself, be more vulnerable. <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not, you know, look, I ain't going to get real. I feel like this is pretty personal right now. But I'm an open book. If you guys got questions, hit me up. Email me at arayshugar at gmail.com. You got questions, I'll fucking, I'll read them straight up on the podcast. I see guys like Theo Vaughn just bearing it all, man. Whitney, Chris, they don't give a fuck. And you got to not give a fuck. You know, fully. You got to fully not give a fuck. And that, that way you get, you know, no one's going to please everybody. And I think that's, that's why I got to get out of my head. Because I, I feel like I do a good job of uh, being, being nice to everyone and being, having integrity on and off stage. But, hey, man, everyone's got opinions. Nobody's perfect. There's a way to be real and truthful without talking shit and being an asshole. I'm just got to find that balance, but I'm into it. So hit me up. If you got questions, comments, concerns, this also could just be a complete waste of time. I got Muppet show curtains, fucking brothel lamps. <laughs> I am definitely the backdrop for this vulnerable episode is, uh, could not be more just, I mean, shine a black light on this room. 
and just fucking dear diary. Woodstock's got nothing on this room. Juice wise. That was gross. But you see, that's what happens when you let the brain just fucking rattle it off. By the way, you like my friendship bracelet? This definitely looks like you got out of a cereal box from 1987. Cocoa Puffs. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Said the... Was the, was the Cocoa Puffs... Was it a bird? I always get Toucan Sam, the parrot, and the Cocoa Puffs bird mixed up. I think the Cocoa Puffs bird was like a velociraptor or a seagull. Guess what? Doesn't matter. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. And um, we'll do this again another time. Cool? Rest in peace, Renee.